<clears throat> Alright, so I know oh, okay. I'm about to say, I know 17 of y'all didn't pile up in here and not one person said what's up. Not one person said hello. Thank you, Josh. Appreciate you, Josh. All right, we here. Tonight's the night. <clears throat> Tonight is Rhea's night to shine. We shall see. We shall see Eddie Guerrero, Jerry Lawler, Tony D'Angelo, for our guy Michael, M. Figgy. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. What's up, Pops? What's up, Rich? All right. <clears throat> Let's get cracking, man. Let's get the elite out of the way. So you get to the select. Get that out of the way. So you get to impeccable. Get that out of the way. In the meantime, what we're really here for is to talk wrestling, right? That's what we're here for, right? To, to have our community go ham on the ongoings in the world of professional wrestling. In this particular show, we'll be talking about the WWE, the Levesque era. <clears throat> See Cena, Kurt Angle, Gunther, Drew McIntyre, good luck, everybody. That's the lineup. That's the lineup. You got some stars. What's up, Phil? All right. Here we go. We're going to get started. <clears throat> As we get started, first and foremost, out the gate, Oscar coming. I like these call-outs. I like these call-outs. Trish Stratus Fire incoming. As we get started. Yeah, Phil. See, Phil, look, Phil, Phil, we're on the same page, baby. We're on the same page. You knew exactly where I was going. You knew exactly where I was going. Let's talk about Solo in the forefront of the bloodline. Yeah. We like that. We like that one. I thought that was a fire segment. I like that segment a lot. Then we got the brakes beat off of them. You know, sacrificial lamb type stuff. Solo went ape shit. I like the... Uh, I like the loving sentiments before absolutely destroying his brother. <clears throat> Thought that was pretty dope. Tonga with his debut. Looked like a killer. I don't know what kind of diet the Anawais are on, but it's it's crazy. Uh, I don't know if he's written off. I don't think they write him off. <clears throat> I think we're just getting started with, with what we're doing here. Trish Stratus, 8 of 49, so right out the gate. Nice little Trish Stratus. <clears throat> I think um, I think we're looking at a new regime. There, you know, we we don't know who's making the phone calls. We don't know who's calling the shots. Shawn Michaels on the um, throwback. We don't know who's calling the shots. Whether it's The Rock making these phone calls to Solo or Roman making these phone calls to Heyman. We don't know. We have no idea. We speculate. That's all we have is pure speculation. And that is entertaining in itself. <clears throat> so we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We got a few things lined up or that are starting to formulate in terms of uh, what we may see going forward. And I think it's going to be extremely entertaining. You know, we, we still have the possible Rock Roman matchup. To where we have two different leaders of the bloodline kind of forming their own little uh, go to. We know Solo was appointed as the new tribal chief by Roman a while back, so it could be Roman calling the shots completely. Um, I hope not, Victor. I hope it doesn't get to that level. I really don't want a NWO, NWO Wolf Pack type of thing. I hope they don't grow to that level. I know that the family itself possibly could. Just because of the amount of members in it. But I hope it doesn't get to that extreme. Nathan Fraser. One half of the NXT Tag Team Champions. 
powerhouses of Bianca Belair and our first auto of the evening. I mean, you called it. You kind of said tonight's the night for Rhea and gold gang nine of 10 Rhea Ripley gold auto. I mean, so far we just out here calling shots. So far, we just out here calling shots. Somebody said Trish. Somebody said Rhea. We just out here calling shots, man. The card gods are strong tonight. I mean, that's how you do it. That's how you do it. That's a nice way to, to get your Rhea on. Ripley's, believe it or not. Tyler Bate, 16 and 24 on the die cut. Very nice hit there. Rhea on the gold auto. Why the hell not? Kurt Angle on the red, non numbered. <clears throat> Maxime Dupree. Big Otis, 26 and 149. But yeah, there's so many options with this uh with this bloodline storyline now. Just when we thought it completely ran its course. Now we have the possibility of new leadership. Uh Heyman not having full control of what's going on. That's always fun. Him not really knowing. The fact that he tried to make the call to someone and solo stop that so we don't know who's running the show behind the scenes we don't know who's making those calls we don't know who's calling the shots out here we just know tonga showed up took jimmy the hell out there's speculation within our bnt camp with our wrestling circle that uh, that might bring the usos back together since their wrestlemania match wasn't really the greatest but bringing the Usos back together as a tag team versus um, Tonga and Solo. We still know that uh, Fatu is still to be joining at some point, the youngest one. So, yeah, man, a lot of options. A lot of options with the bloodline. Still one of the most intriguing storylines in all of professional wrestling, even without Roman or The Rock at the helm. So, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see if they keep their finger on the pulse of what the people want and continue to bring us ridiculous amounts of entertainment, which they've done a really good job with, with the storyline. So now that we're in this next evolution, let's see where we go. There's Rikishi and Jimmy Uso on the family lineage. We will randomize that for our left, right on the base. Dolph Ziggler, second auto of the evening. We'll take that. Family lineage goes there. So we can get to that random later. Nikita Lions, 57 of 80. Nice numbered Nikita. Elite deck of Stone Cold. We're just going to run through these because we have two more cases to do. Star Status, Mr. Bray Wyatt. This one is also... Gold Gang, 9 of 10 on the gold star status of Bray Wyatt. <clears throat> Speculation of uh, Uncle Howdy and his return. Yeah, why the man's phone got smashed? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to really love this storyline. I feel it already. This storyline is going to be very, very good. This next evolution of this storyline is going to be very, very good. I already know it. I can already feel it. With the title changes, we have... Uh, we got some more intrigue to speak about. What are we going to do about Cody? What are we doing with uh, Damian Priest? What's going to happen with this draft? There's a lot of different angles and avenues in which they can take directions that they can take right now after the fallout of Mania. we got to figure out what's next for Gunther. Being the major player that he is, we got to figure out what's next for Seth. Outside of time off, because he definitely needs that. How far do we go with this? Uh, how far can we keep Drew and Punk away from each other while Punk heals and still keep that storyline intriguing? I think that's doable. If Punk continues to just ruin stuff for Drew, that storyline can stay as hot as it needs to be before they can actually get in the ring and wrestle each other 
AJ and LA Knight got another match coming up. That should be good. Ricochet, 92 of 99. What happens with Gable now that Sammy has a belt? You know, do those two square off in a, in a nice little friendly altercation? What happens with this young man? You don't think Cody's going to hold the belt for long? Talk about it, Andy. Let's let's let's, let's discuss this. Why won't Cody hold the belt for long? He won't hold it as long as Roman did. I don't think they're going to run. I don't think they're going to give us another title run to that extent. I do think Cody can do a good three to six months with it, though. I don't think he's a transitional champion by any means. Cody doesn't strike me as transitional by any means. I think we'll see a shorter reign from Priest than we would from from Rhodes. Even though Damian does look the part, I won't I won't deny that part. I don't believe he's going to have a long run, but he definitely looks the part. He's carrying the belt, he has a strut, he has a swagger, he has the aura with it. We'll see if uh, I know he's not bad in ring. Cody getting cocky, getting he's been there, he's been that guy. His suit played out now. Yeah, he won. Roman lost. That's great, but there's someone else who would make. The King Run. Who else? Who would you give that to? Who would be the next one up? Because I look at it when well, we've we've looked at it when we dissected it in the past that Cody's the only one on the roster um, that could possibly take the belt from Roman and have and be like a face of the company type guy. Right now, he's the closest to it. Who goes face first, Priest or Baller? Probably a. Uh, um, that's a good question. I would probably say priest. I would probably say I would probably say priest and they split the team. I think the draft will will break up the judgment day, which would be unceremonious as hell. But I, I have a feeling that might happen. Roddy Piper, 19 to 24. You think it's big show? <laughs> Andy out here with jokes. I think it's big show this time. It's crazy. Star status of Cena. There's not a, another member on the roster right now. I don't. I don't think that has the um, star cachet to carry a company to be like the face of the company the way Roman was. Outside of Cody, I think Cody's the only one with that type of ability, and that's why he's the one to dethrone Roman and get that belt. <clears throat> but um, until they develop someone else for that. I don't know who else they should give that run to. Yeah, Cody is Cody's probably number two in the industry. You could argue number one after beating Roman, but I still have Roman ahead of him. But Cody's probably number two in the entire industry. MJF is still out. So until he comes back, that number two spot is Cody's for the, for the hold. Because everybody else is transitioning into new companies. So like... Okada could have been one of those names, but he's transitioned to AEW. Osprey could be one of those names, but he's transitioning into AEW. So right now, it's probably uh, Roman 1, Cody 2, MJF injured as hell. Or not injured, but taking time off. Still probably number 3 in the game. And if MJF's in AEW and not in WWE, Cody's the only option you really have. What happened to Omos? Um... So I think, well, not I think, the rumor was he's supposed to get a big push. We are speculating that the way that the Dusty, not the Dusty, the Andre the Giant thing went, the over-the-top thing, I think that was an accident, the way he got eliminated. I think he was scheduled to win, and they have to pivot. <clears throat> Look at that. Carmelo Hayes. Uno de uno. I mean... It's just going to be one of those nights. It's just going to be one of those nights, folks. It's just going to be one of those nights. Carmelo Hayes. It's him. Him. Who asked for a mellow? I don't know. Somebody asked for a mellow. Was it one of you in the chat? 
ask for a mellow? Somebody ask for a mellow. Rich, was that you? Rich, did you ask for the mellow? There you go, sir. Hopefully, this makes up for, I guess, last night. You didn't quite get what you wanted, but there you go, sir. Congratulations to you. Shout out to you. All right. So we got our one on one out of the way. We got a one on one last night. We got a one on one tonight. I mean, let's get let's get our streak back. Let's get our streak back. I I felt like I was losing my touch a little bit with the one on ones, but we back. Mister Uno de Uno is back in the game. I like it. Let's see what else we got. Let's see what else we got. We have more break coming up. There's more hits to obtain. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get them. 104, 149 on a Jimmy Uso and his Moo Moo. There's Ava. Bob Backlund. Kofi Kingston, 48 of 99. Uh, where do I think the rock thing will go? I feel like it can't long, last long. It can. So here's here's another thing we speculated about last night that I think this is long term storytelling, obviously. But um, I know it's been pointed out that Paul uh, Levesque, Triple H, however you want to refer to him as, is basically finger on the post. I know what the fans want. I'm going to give the people what they need. Uh, leadership, which we haven't had in the WWE in a long time because it's always been, you know, Vince as a as a big boss. He's healed it up. He's always been a heel in that regard since he um got exposed for being the guy that actually runs the show, right? So now that we know that Trips runs the show, he cares about the fans, he cares about the product, he's going to be a babyface um, company owner. You have to have some, you have to have a foil, so to speak. And who else better than his long-term rival from back in the wrestling days since The Rock has part ownership, not part ownership, but does have a little bit of pull within the company. The Rock becomes your behind-the-scenes heel. You know, we, 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 we run some of that. So Rock will probably have his Cody match at some point. And if not, or even afterwards, can transition into just being an occasional appearance, come in, talk some shit, you know, put together some, some matches, be an asshole, and move on. And if we get one of these Triple H versus Rock showdowns to where we have a wrestling representative, as opposed to those two having to get in the ring again, I think uh, I think that could work as well. If Trips endorses Braun and Rock endorses Solo as his guy, and we get a Braun Breaker, Solo, Sokoa type feud that lasts forever as like the next iteration or, or next iteration of uh, those wrestlers or next representatives of those wrestlers. I mean, we got some good stories. We got some really good stories that can come up down the line. Fit Finley on the turn of the century auto. This one is 17 of 49. Yeah, but the Rocks, this, uh, this final boss hill run he's on has been tremendous. I would love to see this continue. Finn Baller, 7 to 25. Nice teal hit. We have another teal hit coming up. I think it's a family lineage card, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll have to run a random on that one. It is indeed family lineage. And it is indeed the Mysterios. Dom and Ray, 15. Not my bad. 25 to 25. Nice book in there at the end of uh, that set. So we'll run a random on that as well. On that teal. See if that goes to Dom or goes to Ray. Um, if so, if he does take the belt off of him, I'd prefer they didn't have that happen. I do think that they are due for a match. Um, if he does take it off of him, then it's got to be brief. He's got to be the transitional. I just don't know who you line up to beat The Rock for the belt, unless it's like a, a pass it off type of thing, you know, in which case, I don't know how that plays out either. If Rock takes the belt from Cody and hands it to a bloodline member, whoever's supposed to be next up, I don't know how that works either. 
But Rock certainly could come up with a dub over Cody. I also don't think The Rock would have a problem doing the job for Cody either, though. I think he'd be on board with that as well. If it meant, you know, better for the business. So we'll see. We'll see. Like I said, they have a lot of they have a lot of uh, a lot of space, a lot of room to maneuver, a lot of runway. If he just gives it back to Roman, <sighs> yes and no, right? I it makes sense, but if it's still a I had to go do your dirty work to bring to to restore faith back to the family, thirty nine or eighty on a Reddick Moss. They might as well just have the match that they never that they never had. They might as well just line that up and just do it that way. But then again, you give Roman back the belt. What are we doing for this next title run? Elite deck of Trish Stratus, Bautista, Randy Orton. If we give Rock or Roman back the belt. That soon, like within the year of him losing it, within a year of him losing it, I mean, we can't rerun that title run again. We can't. So, that's the difficult part. I don't think Cody loses to either one of them, actually. I think Cody <clears throat> gets his match with The Rock later. I think it's after the belt has already moved on to someone else. Because if he still has it, then he has to win. He has to win. And actually, it's probably better that way because he gets his come up. You know, he gets his payback on The Rock for all the stuff that The Rock did. Like, they could have The Rock win that feud up until the match. You know, he gets the one up. He has the, uh, he's constantly giving them beat downs. He's throwing all obstacles in the way since he's running the show. There's a lot of ways they can play that. And then Cody comes up triumphant in the end. Um, there's a lot of ways to run that. A lot of ways to run that. A lot of runway. For the company right now. I think that's what makes everything so intriguing. Because they have so much runway. And then with the transition over to Netflix coming up too. We also have to see which direction they're taking um, the presentation. I was speaking about it. We were speaking about it last night. I'm wondering if we're going to venture back into more Attitude Era type content. Cody... Rock beats Cody, then Cena does a Twilight run by beating The Rock. That's a possibility, too. That's a possibility, too, with those matches. You know, I think that's that's doable as well. If we have, I just don't know how open to the concept of Rock and Cena trading the belt that the fans will be on board with. Let's see what his next auto is. My guy, Gunta. He needs a belt. They got to get a belt back on this man soon. Gunther on the auto. There's Butch, 17 to 24. Gunther looks completely nude without a belt. Miss Elizabeth on a red throwback. Bianca Belair, a.k.a. the BBL, 48 to 149. Those are her initials on the back of the cars and select when she has autos. It's not me making up stuff. That segment was so weird. Which segment? The you talking about the Cena Rock segment at the end of Mania? Which segment are we uh, referring to, JT? What going on? Let me pull this message. Wait, what happened? Rock and Cody. Okay. You talking about the uh when they switched the belts? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean he promised them he's going to see him at some point in time. So, we're going to get that match somewhere down the line. And I'm not mad at it. I think that'll be entertaining. I think that'll be a good story. I think it'll be a good match. Rock looks like he can still go, which I had my doubts about. 
but he proved me wrong over the weekend for sure. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to the possibility of a uh, a nice little one on one with him and uh, Cody. Give me one second. Um, night one was all right. I mean, the tag match saved it. Night two has some has some blunders in there too. Uh, but overall, in terms of like giving us that feel, having some moments, it's pretty. It's pretty high. It's pretty high. It's pretty high. It's pretty high. No low key, like no bullshit. In my opinion, I think what really helped kind of put that whole show over, especially towards the end with some of the bigger matches. The performers are really good, obviously. That helps. But Samantha Irvin really puts a real stamp on shit. When she's announcing it, she puts a hell of a high stamp on that stuff, man. One second. One second. CM Punk is not in the league. Uh, he's in uh, Impeccable, and we pulled cars of his in Impeccable. So, you'll be looking forward to that later on. Not in Elite, not in Select. CM Punk is strictly in Impeccable. Rhea Ripley, 22 of 49. Another nice Rhea hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She popped in. She popped in, said what's up. There's a Nine Hearts. But um, she did a good job as well. I think everybody that popped out from, like, the staff, you know, did a good job. They were represented well. Brock Lesnar on the Spellbound. But, yeah, Samantha is an absolute gem. Vince better not come back and go on no title run. Vince is donezo. Him and that damn highly dyed mustache of his. He's the inter-main event pictures. I agree. Um, we're speculating that AJ beats LA Knight and gets the title shot versus Cody, I believe. Because <clears throat> I don't think they're going to have LA Knight versus Cody just yet. And then once AJ loses that match, they get the um, they get to resume their rivalry. I still think AJ is long-term gatekeeper or up-and-coming talent. He has the pedigree. He has the accolades. Um, very believable. And we know AJ is going to give us a good performance. So I do think that long-term he's going to be the gatekeeper for the next up-and-coming star. But yeah, they got to figure out something for Gunther. He needs, his, he needs a belt back. There's Rhea Ripley. Still surprised they took it off of him with Sammy, even though I don't mind you know, it being Sammy. I think I got another gold coming up. Even though I don't mind it being Sammy. It's either gold auto or a new breed. Might just be a new breed. Let's find out. It is a new breed, but is it strictly just base new breed or is this gold? Tatum Paxley just turned hill recently. This is gold gang. The gold is out heavy tonight. Paxley, 6 to 10 on the gold auto of the Tatum Paxley hit. Yes, sir. We'll see where her heel run goes going forward. I uh, like the uh, the little stalker thing they have with her and um, Valkyria. Yeah. 23 of 53 on the Omas. Roman Reigns. Austin Theory, one half of the SmackDown Tag Team Champions. 39 of 49. Yeah, I'm with that too, uh, VA. I was under the impression. What's up, Buffalo? I was under the impression, or the, the thought process for me was that um, 
Gunther drops the belt, like hands it over because he's chasing Seth's belt or Damian Priest's belt or whoever's belt, as opposed to him losing. I like the story they told with Sammy. I don't think Sammy holds that belt for a long time. I think he's better in the chase than he is as a title holder. I think he's got a better shot holding that than he does a world title, though. Uh, we'll see how long they give him. We'll see <clears throat> if they run a rivalry with him and Gable. You know, a nice competitive rivalry or something like that before uh, taking a belt off of him. But yeah, man, it, it, it was uh, a little weird. A little weird because it doesn't look like they have a direct plan for Gunther. Like, if his next plan of action was to go right after a world title, I'm cool with it. But if we're really just sitting here and waiting for the doors to open up for him to get a shot, I don't like it. I do not like it. I know Jay is doing the first shot at Priest. I believe he won the number one contendership. So he gets the first shot at Priest, which I'm okay with. But unless you're going to have Gunther take it off of Jay, 33 of 80 on the Kota Kai, they should have just left the IC on him until they were ready to transition from whoever has the world title over to Gunther. Because he should eventually be that champion. Stone Cold. Yeah, IC is good for him. It, he shouldn't go further than that. I see tag belts, stuff of that nature. Sammy's better with the chase. It's the same. It's the same thing with Kofi Kingston when he finally won. Just some guys are better in the chase than they are actually holding the belt. And that's no knock on them as performers. There's just a certain aesthetic. There's a certain um, a certain reason or way that we cheer for certain wrestlers. <clears throat> and in a company of this size, it just doesn't make sense for Sammy to be your world champion. Not for a long term. Yeah, that run was dope. The run was dope. But once he got the belt, nobody cared. I mean, absolutely nobody cared. You notice that. Once Kofi actually got the belt in his hands, people didn't give a shit anymore. It was over. So, yeah. There's a there's a cap to some some of these wrestlers. We like you better in the chase. That's the same reason uh when you look back at like somebody like Roddy Piper, never got a belt, didn't need one. Some people are just over without that, you know? Sammy's one of those type of guys. I think Kofi could have been something like that. AEW's looking worse every day. Um I think they're just their focus is off. Their focus is off, man. They can't, they have to understand that WWE is just a monster, right? Stop trying to compete with the E as a company and just present yourself as the alternative you should be. That's it. If you stop trying to compete with them and just say, hey, we're just different than they are and watch us for our difference, then you're fine. How about y'all? Stacey Keebler, 149 and 149. Nice bookend on the Keebler. Eddie Guerrero on the red. Like, they have a ton of talent over there. Their storylines are kind of eh. But if they push it, it's just like, this is the indie playground. And we're just going to give you great matches. You know, we'll just put on some of your favorites and showcase that way. Then you're good. They don't need to be out here trying to mention WWE or say they're in competition with them. They'd be a lot better if they just... Yo, we're just who we are. I mean, they're not they're not void of talent. They got a ton of talent. GG Dolan. GJ Dolan. 16 of 49 on the GG Dolan. They got a ton of talent. They got Osprey. Joe is still on an amazing run. Obviously, he can still get the job done. Brian Danielson's over there. You know, Moxley has a fan base. Even the up and coming guys. <clears throat> the Dante Martins, the Wardlows. I mean, MJF is one of the best in the business. Adam Cole is still really, really good when he's healthy and he's able to get in the ring and go. They have guys that have put on great matches alongside each other before. You could argue in terms of talent, um, their women's division is very, very good as well. 
I mean, they just have to just focus on the fact that we're just going to be different. We'll present ourselves different. We'll represent ourselves different. And we'll go about our matches differently. And that's it. We'll just leave it at that. If you if you want to watch something other than what you see on Raw and SmackDown and NAC every week, then you come here. And we'll give you that. Yeah, I agree with you, Buffalo. And that's the problem. That's what I'm worried about. Because I really don't want that to be the case, right? The last thing I really want is for alternatives to shut down. We need the alternatives. Now, ultimately, for me, what I want is for Endeavor to completely take over. And if that means getting Tony Khan up out of there, then cool. 115 and 149 on the Bailey. I like for Endeavor to completely take over, and I say this damn near every show. But if Endeavor takes over and keeps everything under one umbrella and we can bring back the surprise element of professional wrestling to where we don't know whose contract is up because it's all owned by the same companies and they can just move wrestlers around as they see fit. They already have a deal with TNA. They have a deal with AEW. They have a deal with WWE in some way, shape, form, or fashion. And we can just move everybody around as we want. We get these surprise visits. We get these, you know, these uh, fantasy matches that we otherwise would not have had. That would be ideal. That would be ideal. Just a bunch of just brilliant wrestling minds under one umbrella and making the game as good as it could be. We don't have to split any companies up. We don't have to shut anybody down business-wise. We just move our wrestlers around and make the most compelling product we possibly can for the fans in general. That's what I want. That's my perfect world. That's my utopic uh, idea that will likely... Yeah, Buffalo, I'm with that. I'm with that. Because right now, if we keep it completely honest, there is more talent in the professional wrestling business than there's ever been. So now would be the time to move that way now would be the time to just move that way put ego aside and understand that we could have some of these great dream matches wrestling would be hotter than it's ever been and we can have that um, transition across all three companies all three major companies if you mean to tell me that we could have the Usos win a bloodline feud against Solo and Tonga. And once that's over, FTR comes out and challenges them to a tag team match. How is that not some of the greatest shit we're ever going to see? Another auto coming up. Baron Corbin. Gold gang. 8 of 10. Goes all over the place, man. Goes all over the place. One half of the former tag team, NXT tag team champions, the War Dogs. Very curious to see what they do with Baron going forward. We know, we know what the plan is with Braun. We know they're going to turn him into an absolute superstar as they should because the kid's good. Brock Lesnar on the Spellbound. This is 3 of 49. But what's going to happen with Corbin now that there's no belt? It's a very good, uh, very good question. Yeah, very nice case so far. Jay Uso, 42 of 99. Main event, Jay. You only have Hollywood tonight? All right. I got you, fam. I got you. I got you, Buffalo. Oh, Rich is loving this. We know Rich is loving this case. Rich got what he came for. He got what he pulled up for. He playing with house money at this point. Select or impeccable for you. But you know you still got to stick around. You still got to hang out. We love your inside, Buffalo. How, uh, how stoked were you when Cody won and your man got to hold on to his record? Was that, uh, was that high for you? Was that a high note for you? You can just sit back and chill now. I feel you. I feel you. He's like, I know I'm getting that car shipped to me. 
is going to be here in a few days. I got nothing to worry about. I'm chilling at this point. I'm chilling at this point. Got an orange mellow too, I think. No, there's an orange rear. Rear gold and then an orange rear. You might get some impeccable mellow too. I feel like we're going to get a gold bar tonight for some reason. I don't know why, but it just feels like a gold bar is on the way. I got that feeling. I got that feeling tonight. Eddie G, I'm going to throw back to the fire little lowrider card. Ted and Paxley. Time for the change. Yeah. All right, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. There's Gunther, 34 53. Yeah, I look forward to a three to six month reign of Cody before they uh, move on to somebody else. And uh, not necessarily hot potato the belt, 17 to 49, but we start getting more of the regular title runs that we're used to seeing. What do you guys see happening with this draft? Let's get some let's get some draft speculation in the air. I think I mentioned earlier, I think the uh maybe not the entire judgment day breaks up, but I think they start to slowly take that thing apart or put it under new guidance. Maybe move Damian Priest over. Rhea is out. Um because she needs her she needs to just run on her own. I think Dom's already kind of shifted over to another faction. So if it ends up being Finn, JD, and they find someone else to add on to it, I wouldn't be mad at that. Me Finn to get a singles belt again. It's not going to be more than six months. Fair enough. Who else could you guys see joining Judgment Day? Obviously, J.D. McDonough would get in there finally. Oh, Don's definitely staying here. It's it's too soon. It's too soon. That that dude is a human furnace right now with the amount of heat he generates. He is definitely staying here. What do you guys think of a possible uh, Bronson Reed being added on as a heavy? They've pushed him a little bit. Tried to give him some traction with some of these wins. Um, he's directionless in terms of character work, but as just a heavy, I wouldn't be uh, I wouldn't be too against it personally. So, what do you people think? Dustin has to come back at some point during Cody's run. You're saying spellbound to Steve Austin, letter E. This is seventy two of ninety nine. Throw Corbin in there. What's uh? What's you What's you guys' opinion on Corbin? Because I have, I think Baron Corbin is awesome, personally. I think he's really good. I think he's extremely underrated. Three of 80 on the Omas. I know he doesn't get a lot of main roster love. So, what do you guys think? Elite deck of Hogan. Underrated. He's got nothing going on now, exactly. <clears throat> Does he fit? Can he fit as a heavy on that team, on that unit? Because I mentioned Bronson just due to the fact that he doesn't have any character work at all. Baron, we've seen in multiple renditions. You know, Happy Corbin, the tag team thing, the, the grizzled veteran down at NXT. Yeah, BA, I agree. I agree. He's fantastic. They just have no idea what to do with him. I, I want them to find something that actually makes sense for him, though. Instead of just throwing them around in a bunch of random shit. That's my only issue. Dijax is Judgment Day. I'm not mad at that, Michael. I'm not mad at that. Dijax another one. That's just great. Great worker. But directionless is all hell. I wouldn't be mad at that. You know what I actually like a lot? Um, they're not going to do anything with him down at NXT. But Dijak and Josh Briggs, 
have really, really good chemistry as a tag team, I think. I know they got Briggs with Jensen and all that. But as a tag team, those two have really good chemistry. 79 of 199. I could definitely see a like Acolytes, uh, APA type of um, situation with those two. <clears throat> where they just come in and just beat people up. Which I think would be good for Finn as the de facto leader of the Judgment Day. As a one-man guy, like getting a singles belt again. JD getting the mid uh, mid card belt, <clears throat> and then you got these two heavies just running around beating people up. Nam Dar, that's nice. Fifteen to twenty five, very very talented young man down at NXT, former Heritage Champion. Gimmicks a little goofy, but it's entertaining. They did a good job. Metaphor did a good job uh, hosting NXT. I thought. Hosting a stand and deliver. And Noam Dar is a really good performer in the, in the ring. Very good performer in the ring. Wrestles a very unique style. The hybrid style that he has. Extremely entertaining. Technically sound. Crisp movement. Sells very well. Tells a good story in the ring. Character work is solid. For the comedy act that he is. I like him a lot. There's potential there. But yeah, Die Jack. Die Jack as a heavy for the Judgment Day. Really good call. Very, very good call, Michael. Won't be mad at that. They need something for him to do. I don't think they're going to give him a belt down in NXT. So bring him to the main roster. Having him run around just beating people up. I'm not mad at that. Andy, you would be a genius to feel like William Regal is one of your favorites of all time. William Regal should be a lot of people's favorite of all time. Going through the SmackDown and challenge Cody. Eventually, eventually, I wouldn't be mad at that. I'd like to see that match. 99 and 99 on Cody Rhodes. <clears throat> Scarlet, 8 of 49. Wyatt on the star status. We have another die cut coming up. We didn't get a razzle dazzle last night. Hopefully, we get one tonight. Yeah. 15 to 24 on the LA night die cut. Very nice. We'll take that hit. Nikita Lions. Boom. But no, Regal. Regal's a legend. He's a wrestler's wrestler. I like William Regal a lot. I'm curious to see where the storyline goes with him and his kid. So, intrigued by that. I think that should be good as well. Last legend in the main roster? Uh, Not yet. Not yet, Michael. And I'll tell you why. I say not yet. Tiffany is already getting uh, one of those pushes, right? Jay Cargill is the other heavy push in the, in the women's division. There's no room for them to add one more to be a focal point. They barely have time for the people that they have on the roster as is. I think if Lash comes up now, she gets lost. She gets completely lost in the shuffle in a women's division. Because if she's not going to be um, rocketed to the top or turn into a Nia Jax level monster, then they don't have any space for her right now. And while she could be that level, I think... Um, Character-wise, it just doesn't fit. Now, once we get Jade established and we want to give her a faction of some sort and you want to add Lash to that, I'm on board. I'm completely on board. 64 at 149. Where she can be the heavy for Jade, I'm completely on board for a Jade Cargill Hill run with Lash Legend as her running mates. I'm with that. Because once we get the um, 
it looks like they're going to keep the the jade and this is a great call by my guy ty um it looks like they're going to keep the jade and bianca kind of teaming thing going on for now once they split that up and bianca goes face and jade goes heel which i think will probably be the most ideal way to do that um bringing up last legend in a situation like that makes sense as a heavy to kind of help combat what Bianca is going to do. Pin pals of Becky Lynch. It's Christmas. 12 of 25 on the Becky Lynch auto. I believe someone asked for Becky as well earlier. Uh, he got Hollywood Hogan today, Chris. No, um, he doesn't got Hulk. I think Lash does, does, does need to be on the main roster at some point, though. She's developed fairly well. She's developed fairly well. She's about ready. I like the die jack move because there's a possible lane for him on the main roster. I think outside of that, there's not a ton of the NXT guys and gals that make sense to call up right now if you don't have some sort of faction direction or straight to the top direction for them. Like dragging off his main roster talent, but <clears throat> he'd be a slow burn. They're slow burning with Braun. <clears throat> and we know how good he is. There was nothing for him to do in NXT. But they're slow burning with him as well. Um, I think you bring Dijak up and you throw him in. Gacy to Uncle Howdy thing, maybe. Possibly. Possibly. I like Joe Gacy a lot, but I don't want... I'm already kind of on the fence about the Uncle Howdy thing continuing in general. Because of he's going to get the, you know, your brother passed away push. As is. So I'm kind of skeptical on that. Out the gate. I don't want them burying two potential talents in the same storyline because of that. So Gacy should stay by himself. I think he eventually gets one of these Mick Foley type runs. Maybe not to that extent, not to that level, obviously. But he presents that, you know, throw caution to the wind, completely give my body up type of uh, performer. And if they can find a lane for that in today's company, he could be somewhat star level. We got another, this is another gold auto. Let's see. Cora Jade. Very nice on the pen pals. 29 of 49 on the Cora Jade auto. Get well soon. Let's see, we got a tail coming up as well. Let's see, so it's supposed to be here. Lola. Candice LeRae on a tail. 21 to 25. Uh, I think Cora put her knee on backwards or something like that. She twisted something up. She ripped up something in her leg area. And now she's on, she's rehabbing. Hopefully to be back sooner rather than later. Santos. Escobar, 224 on the die cut. Gacy, Uncle Holly. Theoretically, I like it. I just don't want them burying that kid. Because I don't think they're going to give Howdy a whole lot of time either. <clears throat> it's going to be difficult too. And if Howdy's supposed to be this powerful entity like we mentioned last night. They need to put him with some monsters. What do they do with Rhea now? Nothing. She continues her she continues her title run. Um she gets away from the judgment day, which I think will be ideal. And then we can really showcase the fact that Rhea is dominant as hell and one of the best wrestlers, period, in the company. They just need her away from, from the Judgment Day to really showcase that. <clears throat> that Judgment Day umbrella really put a damper on everybody's individual uh, accolades, I think. 
Like nobody cared about Rhea being a champ for real. I forgot Finn and, and Damien even were the tag team champs until that ladder match popped up. Comes up against Jade. Uh, when Jade's ready. When Jade's ready. Rhea's way. She's a few light years ahead of Jade in terms of in-ring stuff. So I don't think they want to do that because they'll embarrass that girl. 68 to 80 on Butch. They're doing a really good job of bringing Jade along very, very slowly. They're keeping her extremely protected early on. And they need to because there's star power there that they need to not lose by rushing the process. And they very well could like spoil that whole thing if they rush it, if they push it too hard, too fast. Pause if necessary. I agree with you, Andy, and I think that's gonna help that's gonna help the legacy. That's gonna help that push, right? That's gonna help keep it um not necessarily keep it fresh, but keep it believable. I got a question for you. Uh yeah, I was I was worried that they'd have Liv actually beat Rhea. Like be the one to beat Rhea. I don't worry about that anymore. Um, but I mean, she's going to have to use everybody as a filler at some point in time. She just will. She's going to have to run through that entire division a few times over before they actually take a belt off of her. Here's my thing. Here's my question for you all. Right. We just came off of Roman's ridiculous run. All right. Eight, 85 years as a champion, all this goofy shit. Right. And they had the big speculation he was going to break all these records, this, that, and the third. <clears throat> How would you feel if they gave that run to Rhea? Because right now she's the longest running champion on the roster. It's still low. It's bubbling low. They're not, like, using it as a storyline or nothing like that. But her with that run, to me, makes a bit more sense just because of the fact that we know there's a dominance factor to Rhea Ripley that just doesn't exist with any other guys on the roster and their counterparts. Can we slowly bubble that push? Because they can move the other belt around as much as they want to. Right? <clears throat> oh, yeah. Charlotte is going to have to be involved in there somewhere. Maybe on a comeback when Rhea is like in the heat of this big run. Kiana James on the auto. But there's a lot of talent. Maybe she had a story like Roman, but she doesn't yet. That's the only that's the only uh drawback for me right now. Is developing one. 81 of 99. They have to develop a story for Rhea to where we we're that invested. And it can't be it's got to be more than just like the Undertaker's WrestleMania streak story. It's got to be bigger than that. It has to be something that can run weekly. Elite deck of Juan Cena. 14 to 49. That's the only thing. Outside of she just kicks everybody ass. There's not a ton of story they can throw at Rhea. <clears throat> or put alongside Rhea. She's not going to have a bloodline type of thing. I don't think she needs a faction. But if they can just run with pure dominance and just make that be a storyline, like treat her like Goldberg or something like that, that might be the only real way to do it. Because they have enough talent on the roster. And we're talking about super young talent. So Roxanne Perez, Thea Hell. Uh, Tiffany Stratton, Sol Ruka, uh, Kalani Jordan, <clears throat> Lola Vice. All these ladies are around, well, shit, maybe younger than Rhea, slightly. But these are all wrestlers that could develop alongside her and eventually get to the point to where they can challenge her after they've, you know, gone through whatever gauntlets they need to go, go through to get to that level. Like, there's, there's a lot of ways that they can stretch this thing out eventually bring in the Jordan Graces. <coughs> you 
know, maybe a Statlander might make a make a jump over from another company. There's options here. Julia, yep, that's another one. They got a ton of options if they decide to stretch this title run out because uh, the female roster, the women's roster is, is deep as hell over in the WWE. So Rhea will have challengers, enough of them, more than enough. 97 to 149. Nia Jax can beat her with Bloodline. It's possible. I don't think they're ever going to put that together, though. Take her on the throwback. Bianca Blair on the Elite deck. She's definitely a, a viable option to possibly beat Rhea. <coughs> but yeah, Rhea with an extremely long title run. You know, a sneaky long title run. I wouldn't be mad at. I think that that would be doable. She's the one that can hold that record because it makes sense for her character and just how dominant she is and we know she is. She's head and shoulders above the majority of that roster. There's maybe a handful. That match with Charlotte, Bianca, you know, on a given night could. I think Tiffany Stratton has potential to Later down the line, because she's ridiculously good. All right, there's our Razzle Dazzle. Well, ruin that one. There you go, Razzle Dazzle, Mr. JD McDonough. The rest of these. Nothing of note. But in the meantime, she can put on great matches to stretch out this title run. You know, we haven't seen her in Kari Sane yet. We haven't seen her with uh, EO Sky for real. A nice psychological rivalry with Dakota Kai would probably be good. She's very good in that regards. We could run back through the Baileys and, you know, maybe we get Becky on a rematch when she's not sick. Let's see if that makes a difference. <clears throat> we decide to run out of the story. You know, a more developed Zoe Stark gets another shot. There's a lot of different ways to run with this thing. We got the Nine Hearts. Roman Reigns. Zelina Vega. Spellbound of Brock Lesnar. Auto behind him. One, two, three, kid. Turn of the century auto of the one, two, three, kid. 11 of 25 on the Sean Waltman. Iron Sheik, three of 80 on the big Sheiky. How long do we think Bailey holds her belt? Is she transitional? Got a ready leak deck coming up. Should be interesting. Uh, I think Naomi came back for a rumble, right? So she came back for rumble. She was in the elimination chamber and and WrestleMania. So she's been back for the last three PLEs. And uh, yeah, title shot.
38 and 99 on the final boss. I'm not mad at Naomi getting the title shot. Cora Jade, Tatum Paxley. When you get your champions, you kind of want to have them look somewhat credible. And 39 and 53. Um, Vet stars that we know can go could possibly win <clears throat> are good. Um, they're good to kind of build up what that title run is going to be. And we don't want Bailey to completely just lose that thing immediately. I mean, she's, I personally think she's going to be transitional, but it won't be like the next match. It'll be the next hill she has to face. And maybe a storyline. I think they're grooming uh, Stratton. To take the belt from her sooner rather than later and start her run. And I want her to build a Mean Girls crew once she does to protect the belt. The new songs the company are picking her entrances kind of suck. Yo, Diamond Hand said the same thing last night. He's not feeling a lot of these entrance songs, the new ones. He hates AJ's new one. He hasn't liked a couple other people he mentioned. You think she wins that Mania Forty One? Maybe, maybe if they want to, if they want to stretch it out and give her a moment, I can see her defending there though. I can see her defending against a really top-notch opponent. I think she wins it beforehand. Personally, Spellbound on Austin. She's ready. If they make her way to Mania, then fine. But she is more than ready. She's really good, really fast. Cleaned up a lot of the nonsense, a lot of the riffraff she had, a lot of the holes in her game down at NXT. She's definitely tightened up. Top dollar. I think it's back to back nicely. Put an auto of his. All right. on the low rider got a teal coming up oh Eddie on the low rider die cut that's fire 5 of 24, very nice hit for the Eddie Guerrero spot. I know there were some requests for some nice AG cards earlier. So there you go. Start status of the rock. It's about as good as you're going to get with a Guerrero spot because there won't be an auto here. Raquel Rodriguez, 68 of 149. Nah, Andrew, it's been light, bro. We haven't really hit anything so far. Dakota Kai. The Eddie Guerrero might have been the biggest card we hit so far. The one you just walked in on. There's a tail of Ken Shamrock. 8 of 25. Who do you have, Drew? She's your, I think he, this is from maybe the person who takes him to Bay, just give Bay a little more time. Yeah, I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at it. I think Bailey might have to even go through, um, maybe go back through damage control. Maybe we get a Kari match. You know, she's got to go through Asuka a little bit. I don't think they completely rip it from Bailey right away. She's transitional, but I wouldn't be mad at them, at them giving her a little bit of a run. A couple months or so. Wouldn't be terrible. Who you got in the break, Drew? 
Throw me one of your wrestlers. I'll see if I hit anything for him. It's been light, though. It's been a light break. Recap is going to be terrible. <clears throat> Real slow. Riddle, McCool, Yulisa, and Bubba. I think we might have gotten a Riddle insert thus far. But he's more prevalent in select. McCool to select. Yulisa select. <clears throat> I think Bubba has a throwback in Elite. And hopefully they all have something in impeccable for you. We're due for a Tiffy Auto. It's been a minute. It's been a minute since we had a Tiffy Strat Auto. I know we had a break where we pulled like five of them. Not me, but under the BNT banner, somebody pulled like five Stratton Autos in one break. I'm about due. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot. We did. We had a one on one uh, Mellow Auto, uh, some golds, some gold autos. But none too crazy, none too crazy. 32 at 149, Alba Fire. Hank Walker just jumped out of my hand, but it's Hank Walker. Becky Lynch, Dusty Rhodes. I hate that they put this man in polka dots. Ah, that's dope, that's dope, Josh. I hate that they put that man in polka dots, but he made it work. Vince just don't... If he ain't make you, he hates you. Nice color match of Kurt Angle, 142 at 149. That's a nice angle hit, as requested. B5, Charlotte Flair. Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, 59 of 80. On the greatest laugh in professional wrestling. Is your daughter into uh, gymnastics like Tiffany is as well, or is she just a fan of her as a wrestler? Image and Charlotte. Okay. Solid. Solid reason. Good reason. Like I said, they got a gold mine with that with that young lady. If they uh they can capitalize on a lot. They can capitalize on a lot. I think the part that makes her stand out so much and garner the amount of respect that she's garnered so so quickly is the fact that she plays this Barbie type character. But we've seen her take ridiculous spots. We've seen her put her body on the line. She's done some hardcore bumps. I think, I believe we've seen her bleed a couple times. And she just keeps going. She keeps going. So, yes, there's a Barbie image in the character. But by nature of who she is, 76 or 99 on the Roman Reigns, by nature of who she is and how she presents it, they it gives them a lot more <clears throat> runway and a lot more um, development character wise it gives them a lot more room to kind of transition her into a different type of persona if they want to andre chase the red on red pulled his one on one last night another auto coming up behind the star status of hogan some pen pals seth freaking rollins very nice hit What's left for Seth? Look at that. Seth Rollins. Roman Reigns. What do you know? Did anybody else think that Moxley was coming down the stands when the show music hit at Mania? Was I the only one? And 
also, how absolutely brilliant was that st long-term storytelling? Was that not absolutely brilliant? That was beautiful. Beautifully done, beautifully executed, told to perfection, especially as the reason for as the why Roman lost the belt. I loved it. I didn't want him to lose because I didn't think he would, but the way they put it together, I loved it. There's Charlotte on the elite deck. Keanu James. This is 38 to 49 on the Kiki J. Becky Lynch star status. Full throttle of Alan Jones. Dom Mysterio. How wild would that have been if it was Ambrose? As much as I hate for him to be back in the company, I think he just doesn't fit here. That would have been insane if it was Ambrose. Alright, next stack. Are y'all watching uh, 300 right now? I'm probably going to watch that. I might pick a couple matches of Mania too. So I, liked, uh, I like some of the matches they had. And I also liked... Um, I ran back the Obafemi, Dijak, and Josh Briggs match. Stand and deliver. I ran that back multiple times. That match was insane. Obafemi is is different. Different. Rey Mysterio on the Spellbound. There's an auto. Another new breed. A lot of NXT autos. JD McDonough. It's not bad. JD's having a solid break. We'll take that hit. Austin. What uh what fight are they on, Drew? Steiner or Braun Breaker. We pulled that pass in the torch last night. That was a fire card. Went to Braun Breaker. I think it was numbered to 25. Bailey on the star status. This one is 59 of 99. Roxanne P. Holloway round three. All right. That's, uh, that's one I want to see. No spoilers. I want to see that one. Factor in the third round means it's probably a decent fight at least, and nothing else. I think it's going to be an epic brawl, but I don't know. I'm gonna check that out when uh while I'm packaging up tonight. <clears throat> Four boxes left for the elite. Then we'll move on to our select, and then we will give you the main event that you're all here for. It will be absolutely impeccable in doing so. We got 41 in the live. We appreciate you all. Somebody can give me a count of the uh, likes real quick. Just for my own curiosity. How many likes do we have? Brett the Hitman hard on the die cut. That's, this has been a pretty uh, fire case. Six likes is crazy. Three of 24. On the Hitman. That is insane. Thought y'all loved me for real. Just got up to eight. I appreciate the two of you who 
took my passive aggressiveness and ran with it. Spellbound, Stone Cold Steve Austin on the L, 24-25. Omas. Elias, 13-149. <clears throat> Waiting on Tony D and Jerry. Thanks for the Eddies. No doubt, Mike. I mean, it very well could. It very well could. If we got some cool extras. Yeah, again, we got some cool extras again. But we'll see. We shall see. Hey, Drew, has the card been dope so far? Has it been a good card? Has it lived up to uh, quickly up to 14 likes? <laughs> I like it. I like it. I like it. Has uh, 300 level to the hype? 51 in the chat. Appreciate that. We were talking about it last night because uh, boss man Danye watched his first Mania last week. He actually sat down and checked out Mania to kind of see what the hubbub was all about. He's a big MMA guy. Big, uh, you know, I'm sure he's watching 300 right now, like the rest of you. <clears throat> but he's a big MMA guy. And I think him seeing Mania and all the spect spectacle that comes with that really helped him understand uh, the difference between the two. Like, there's levels to this. No, I'm watching everything. You can tell me the you can tell me the Oliveira fight. Was that like uh like the best fight so far or what? Carl Anderson. We keep pulling Carl Anderson autos. I'm not mad at it, but we pull quite a bit of those. Whoa, 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 A milk car. What are we doing? I said Oliveira, not all the event. Tell me about Halloween Gaethje right now, fam. I'm going to watch that. <laughs> 20 seconds more. Oliveira got that. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Say less. Say less. Yeah, I want to see. I want to see. Who you got? Uh, who you got in the main? With Jamal and uh, Alex. Who you got? Dima Liga versus Ray Ray first match. That's probably a classic. And still coming up. Yeah, Alex. All right. Diesel, 31 and 99. I'm going with Mr. Jamal Hill. But uh should be a good fight. Kane on the red. Dwayne on the blue, 46 and 149. Final boss. Roxanne Perez on the till. 9 of 
Roxanne Perez on a hill run. We'll see how long this lasts. How convincing she can be in that role. So far, not terrible. She's embracing it. She definitely, she definitely wants to be a hill. She definitely wants to give us a share. So I'm not mad at it. Feast your eyes. Yeah, die jack to judgment day would be fire. Finn going back on his run. Singles competition. JD has his little right hand. Goonie, die jack out here. Executing mofos. Give them one more. Get their acolytes on. Yeah, I'm not mad at that at all. I'm very intrigued. If that's the case, if that's what they decide to do. Drew McIntyre. Him and CM Punk should be absolutely ridiculous. Another gold auto coming up. We'll save it. We'll save it. We'll sweat that a little bit. Uh, McIntyre and Punk. If Punk can, can hold up in the ring, that should be a really, really good rivalry. They've done an excellent job building that. They've done an excellent job building that. <coughs> Very intriguing. All right, Samuel, new IC champion. Who's going to be our auto this time? Is that Nikita Lyons? It is. Gold Gang. 3 of 10 on the Nikita Lyons. Pen Pals Gold Auto. The goals have been re damn ridiculous tonight. Read damn ridiculous tonight. We have we have five goals tonight. Four of them autos. I like you. I like you. All right, three more boxes. This is just the elite. We ain't got to select. I need impeccable to be better tonight than it was last night. For sure. If nothing else, impeccable needs to blow last night's impeccable out of the water. That was some ass. I ain't gonna lie to you. That was some ass last night. All right, let's go. Midnight on the East Coast. We appreciate those of you on that side of the world staying up with us. Hopefully you're buckled in for the two more cases. Elite is the, uh, Elite is the marathon. The other two, not so much. But Elite is definitely the marathon of this uh, this three case break. Spellbound of Roman, of Shirik Rude, OG Tough Guy. Star status of Lita on the orange, eleven of forty nine on that insert. Got like two orange inserts of Lita last night on the Spellbound. Same letter though. Mankind, 15 of 99. Highly underrated for his part in the uh, Attitude Era. I think a very important part. I think I gave the analogy last night of Mankind being the Draymond Green of the Golden State Warriors dynasty. That was Mankind for the Attitude Era. He was the, the glue that tied it all together. That made it all work. Electra Lopez, sixteen and one forty nine. Roman Reigns on the elite deck.
Godfather, 22 of 53. Oh, Trey. Lineage of the Nighthearts, a redemption that I just whipped right through. Rey Mysterio on the Elite Sigs. There's our auto there. Rod Spinners. Rod Spinners. King of Mystery on the Redemption card. Speaking of Ray Ray, there he is. What's uh what Ray run is better for you? WCW Ray or his WWE run? Yeah, a lot of those were the Cruiserweight matches at the time were that was their that was what set them apart. WCW. Having that cruiserweight division, that was what set them apart. So much so that Vince tried to replicate it with super inferior talent. Taka Michinoku and the likes. Even though Esa Rios is actually pretty good. Just we, we it wasn't the same type of uh, variety and just skill set as there was in WCW in terms of the cruiserweight division. Shinsuke Nakamura, six of twenty four before WCW Ray. <clears throat> yeah, I'm I'm with you on that one. I know he's accomplished a lot in the WWE. Really, really great run. Obviously, a first ballot when he decides to hang up the mask and the boots. But WCW Ray. In terms of entertainment, was ridiculous, and I'm not afraid to tell you that. Now, I will say, I prefer Eddie's WWE run to his WCW run, but uh, Ray's WCW run definitely stands out for me. Compared to uh, his WWE. <coughs> ben Wall's run, I'm, I'm torn on. I don't know if I prefer WCW or WWE. Another teal coming up. Yeah, Ryan, it proves that it just goes to show, like, you know, how safe that could actually be when done right. J.C. Jane on the auto. Back-to-back -back nights of a J.C. Jane auto. Dijak, the aforementioned Dijak. 13 of 80. Let's get that petition started to get Dijak in the Judgment Day. Michael Figueroa with a brilliant idea for that call-up. Jimmy Uso, 5 of 25. Yeah, that's crazy. That is crazy. Dean's one of those guys that just never could. He was never going to get over in a company that required more than just his in-ring stuff. Like Dean Malenko would, would have been in, in the prime of ROH, right? When ROH is at his absolute peak. When Brian Danielson was the champ over there. When James Gibson came over there and uh, had a nice little title run and got an opportunity to showcase his technical skill, that's when Malenko, that's where Malenko would have been at home. That 
version of ROH. I like the Gaethje Holloway fight. I'm sure I will. I have no doubt about that. If they did what I expected them to do. We got another Razzle Dazzle, ladies and gentlemen. Second Razzle Dazzle. Scary Sherry. Sherry Martell in the Razzle Dazzle. I like. I like. We didn't get a Razzle last night. We doubled up tonight. Card Gods are blessing us. They're with us tonight. They're showing us love. All right, nothing else there. You see a lot of young Charlotte Flair and Ariana Grace. I haven't seen I haven't seen Ariana Russell yet for me to make that call. I need to see her in ring. Um, character wise, though, she's ridiculous. She's ridiculous. She is one of my favorite parts of the NS, NXT uh, pre show. The beauty queen thing that she's doing, she is killing it. She is smoking that character, dude. I got to see her in the ring to see if that comp makes sense. But character-wise, whether she she's good in the ring or not, she's going to be credible. She's going to be credible. Beth Phoenix, turn of the century. Nice auto of Beth Phoenix. Mrs. Copeland. Another one ahead of her time. Diesel, 16 of 99. Beth today would be nasty. Beth versus Rhea. Beth versus Rhea would be fire. The obvious China and Rhea match would be fire. But I like what uh, I like what Beth and Rhea would be able to pull off today. I don't know if Beth still has one more run in her. But I could see that being the case, too. I could see that being a situation where Rhea, you know, it gets to the point that we're now, we're pulling out legends to see her in the ring, to challenge her, to test her might. I was mentioned in ROH, I remember during the uh, Brian Danielson run, he had a lot of that going on to where he had Grizzled Vets. I think Lance Storm challenged him for the belt at one time. They give Rhea something like that to where we're bringing in, <clears throat> we're bringing back legends to possibly give you some sort of run. I wouldn't be terribly offended by that. If they can still go, that is. Hogan on the Elite deck. This one is 16 and 99. Who beat you out tonight, Buffalo? Were you just over the Hogan spot or they got a little too... Too pricey for you, Mankind, 31 of 149. Or you just want to take a break. I can understand you want to take a break. Because you, you definitely do some spinning to get that Hogan spot. So sitting one out, I understand. I definitely understand. <clears throat> I know for a while there, they were running up the price on you, fam. I know for a while people were... Going ham on that bid. Ridiculously ham on that bid. Went high today. To, yeah. Yeah, I know for a while, man, people were kind of getting a little crazy. <clears throat> Gacy, the new mankind. Michael, why are we on the same page, sir? That is the comp I made earlier. I think that's his ultimate role. Eventually, if, if the world is receptive to that. If the current climate over 200 is crazy. I mean, unless you're, I don't know, if you're banking on impeccable, cool. I don't know if there's anything in the leak that garners that type of price tag for Hogan, but, you know, I ain't going to tell people what to do with their money. Trips, Sherry.
But yeah, Gacy has a new Mankind. I see that potentially being the case if there's a lane for him in the current climate, which, you know, we'll have to see. I have a question for you guys. NX, uh, not NXT. Netflix being a new home for Raw, for WWE, whatever, whatever show they decide to put over there. <clears throat> a little bit more, or a little bit less in terms of restraints, I would assume. Do we see anyone who's not currently in a star position growing into a star due to a little more leniency on a Netflix platform. I'll take my Hollywood ring side. I would like to see a Hollywood ring side. <clears throat> I want to hit that for you. 10 and 53. On Bulldog. Spellbound of Austin. Bailey, 122 or 149. Like, do we think anyone gets introduced to a Netflix audience and they just take to that individual more so than the USA or the WWE audience has? Eight of 99 on the J Uso. You think they put current rock on the Netflix site? Well, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. But I mean, somebody that wasn't already in that position, somebody that's not already that doesn't already have a star power that somehow that move over to Netflix creates that star power for them. Who's flying below the radar and just needs that opportunity? You think audience is the same? I don't know. I think I think we might run into some casuals. Obviously, they're going to bring over the, the current um, audience, but there might be some casuals that are just, ah, well, this was put on a Netflix list. I haven't watched wrestling in a while. I didn't know they still did this. And just tune in because it got put on the top 10 list or something like that. <clears throat> Last box of the Elite. Then we're moving on to our Select. Where, are we on the main on 300? We're main event time on 300, right? Bret Hart. Women's fight, okay. Star status of Edge. This is 89 and 99. Finn Baller, 66 to 80. Sonya Deville, 17 to 99. 19 likes, appreciate that, appreciate that. Uh, do they have to? I don't think so. I believe Netflix has only taken one show. Peacock has like the whole description. That's how you get your your PLEs and all that stuff. So I don't think they get rid of it. They just move whatever that catalog is. Or maybe they leave the raw catalog as is. Like wherever it stops is where it stays on Peacock. Or they could just do that too. 
Because, I mean, you get all the Raws and, the, and all the uh, NXTs over there, and they're still running on USA at the same time. So I don't see why they need to drop it. See, Todd, you and I are on the same page, sir. I think that is necessary. We've been screaming that the ladies need their own show for a while. Way too much talent on that roster. 80 at 149. Extremely excited at the fact that they got the North American uh, women's title now down at NXT. They needed a mid-card belt for the ladies because of the amount of talent and because there is a slight bit of a gap between the, the top tier and that next group. But yeah, if the ladies get their own show, sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. We know the talent's there. They get a chance to showcase. It's a high variety. Yeah, uh, a mid-card belt for them. All that works. Another gold auto. Elite Signatures Gold. Card 40. Xavier Woods. Xavier Woods on a gold auto. Redemption. Gold Gang. The 40 minute promos will help. I mean, true, true, true. Hey, we appreciate you, Todd. We needed that input, though. We needed that input because, like I said, we've been screwing up from the rooftops for the longest. Ladies need their own show. The ladies need their own show. We know that the Beckys and the Charlottes and the Rias are that top tier. We need some for that second tier and that up and coming stars. Our NXT gals. Those lower card ones. The developmental girls. Like we need a showcase for all of them. They all need an opportunity to be on TV. The Lola Vices need an opportunity to be on TV. If Keanu James is needing an opportunity to be on TV. Thea Hell, JC Jane. Who's JC's, uh, what is her name? Oh, how did I forget? What is her name? She's another, uh, Division One athlete that they just signed. She was, uh, pretty impressive in the one, in her, uh, in her, uh, debut match, I thought. Oh, yeah, no problem, Todd. That's what we aim to do. Quincy Elliott, Stocks, Edge on the Elite Deck, Million Dollar Man, Matt Riddle, 21 to 24 on the Matt Riddle. Malenko wins the title. Dragon Lee, 95 or 149. Let's see, DDP was somebody that they, that WWE completely disrespected. They had ready storylines, ready made storylines already. People's Champ versus People's Champ. DDP versus The Rock. Would have been incredible. Should have been incredible. Good old Vince. He doesn't make you, he will destroy you. No more. No more. We've already seen examples of trips. Definitely not following that same um, that same guideline. I mean, obviously, you know, Cody did a great job with Cody or has done a great job with Cody thus far. Jade is getting a uber push. Extremely protected. Well, best of luck to you, Todd. Hopefully, you do get those dubs, friend. Either way, 
stop in, come hang out with us. And tomorrow should be on the second channel. With the big dog. With the big dog. Alright. Road dog. 28-49. Last stack of cards on the Elite. And then we'll move on to Select. Spellbound of Brock. The Miz. Bray Wyatt on the star status. Pin Pals of Sonya Deville. It's a nice hit. Nice auto, Sonya Deville. B Fab. Alright. <laughs> nice. Nice. Nice, Todd. I'm glad uh glad we we're able to kind of facilitate that for you. That's what it's all about. Getting the people into the hobby. This match is the battle of the mullets. Crazy. Crazily accurate. All right, let's see. Let's get into our select team all. Our goals are our golds to five autos. Those are our hits. Those are the ones we're chasing. Let's get it. Possibly, possibly. If this was stated last night, it's quite possible. Bruno really doesn't get a whole lot of bids, uh, which is disrespectful. The man is a legend. Bruno Sam Martino. All right, well, that sounded destructive. But we're here. We're here. It's all safe. It's all safe. Everybody is... Nice and protected. There, 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 and there. Boom. All right. We'll go random. Oh, we could go. Uh, it might have still been me. If it was here. If this was the backdrop, it was probably me. Let's select our selections. I don't know what that's about, but they need to relax up there. Where is Sean, by the way? Everybody that Sean normally bids on hit last night. I hope you didn't watch. Do I think the Tony D character can make it in WWE? I actually do. I was very, very skeptical about it. I thought it was a little goofy. He had a great match with Dragunov. Um, I think there's a ceiling to it, obviously. But I... I wouldn't be surprised to see him be successful. I think personally that there's a uh, he's going to get turned on here soon. I think Stacks Bray Wyatt on the red sensation. I think Stacks uh, turns on him eventually. Drew McIntyre, twenty four of ninety nine on the five minute champion. Oscar ninety six of ninety nine on the Oscar. So Moss on the red. Keanu James. Ringside of Matt Riddle. Roxy P on the red. And the King of Mystery, 36 of 99. You think Sean might have won his Russian roulette? That's crazy. I appreciate you, Todd. Thank you for popping in, sir. Spreading good vibes. We appreciate you.
Yeah, definitely all his spots. Hit. I don't know why uh, he decided that that was the night to not join, to not be here, be present. <clears throat> No, good vibes. Spreading the good lies is crazy. Good vibes, sir. Good vibes. He said, let me log back in. Make sure he didn't say something wild to me. No, no, no. You spread good vibes, sir. All vibes. Fifty three in the chat. We appreciate you all. We know for some of you East Coasters, well, for all of you East Coasters, it's late, late as hell. Appreciate you hanging out though. All right, let's see. First auto. Well, there's our gold five of five. Carrying cross, ringside gold auto five of five. Mister Carrying Cross. Like I said, for that spot, there's another gold coming up. Kane, gold gang, one of ten on the gold Kane snapshot. Got a silver Cody, mellow. He's had a slow night tonight. Hank Walker, Right spinners, right spinners. <laughs> Appreciate you, Todd. <laughs> definitely, definitely want to uh, take that props. Definitely wouldn't call you a liar for that. He aims to bleed. Spinners, we ride spinners. Mm, 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 mm. artistic impressions. Get one of those. Who was the worst mid card wrestler and why was the hacksaw Jim Duggan? Because he was terrible. Drunk on the job. Um, didn't really have much of a move set. Just large for no reason. Probably in good with some. He either had dirt on somebody or he was just friends with people in, in high places. Hogan had a lot of those, actually. J.J. Dolan, 98 and 99. Hogan had a, a plethora of folks he protected with his uh, with his status in the business. Got a gold coming out. We'll save it. Randall Keith Orton, 64 of 99. Yeah, Hacksaw is terrible, fam. When I've gone back and i watched those old Raw matches, that dude's ass. Almighty Bobby Lashley on the gold. Two of ten. Gold game. Roberto Lashley. Not mad at that. Not mad at that. I need them to do something with this faction they have them in though. That match was not good. That uh, triple threat, I'm not sure about that. That six man tag match was not good. It was not good. Snoop on the commentary was it? It was entertaining, but if we're pushing Bobby and Street Profits and even Carrying Cross and his crew as serious threats, we got to keep them out of the comedy matches, folks. We just have to. If you want me to believe that I should care about any of these. Six to eight individuals that you have involved in this story. 
You got to keep them out of the comedy matches. Snoop on play by play is not going to do that for me. Very entertaining. But yeah. Not if I'm supposed to take these guys serious. Walker, Moss, Ringside, or Rhea. This is always fire. I love this fucking card. I really do. So mad I didn't put out one on one. Ringside, one, two, three, kid. On the red, he's had a solid break thus far. Undertaker, this one is 80, yeah, 84 of 99. On the Taker, Bianca Belair. Roman Reigns on the red and a silver diesel. Oh, how about that, tough guy? Shut up. Have a beer, 32. Yeah, I don't know where I That one was good. It's it supposed to be ECW. Who do you play in ECW? Same character? If he was good in ECW, passable, plausible, whatever, in ECW, that was Heyman. Paul Heyman knows how to maximize talent. We've seen him do it time and time again. If you were to DiBiase. Oh, this must be a uh, before. Okay. Alexa Bliss on the sensations. It's a gold snapshot. Motion to skip to impeccable. Yeah. Uh, in about nine boxes, gonna be. I got you. I promise you, we'll move right on. Dexter Loomis, gold gang. 3 of 10, DDP beats Eddie, as he should have during that time. DDP was the man. Man, this was, uh, was out here killing people with that diamond cutter. Hitting it from all angles. Pause. Asuka, 72 and 99. Big taker. I got you, Gumby. I got you. Welcome back, by the way. Are you? Have you uh taken off your hiatus? You left us for a minute there, fam. It's two breaks in a row. It's like you back back. It's, it's as if though you like us again. We ride spinners, we ride spinners. Silver GG. You want to see some Tommaso Ciampa? Julius Creed. 11 of 99 on the Julius Creed. A star in the making, in my opinion. There's Tommaso. 
Joe Gacy on the ringside. It's a fire card. Ringside red of Mustafa Ali. We like big stuff. Riddle on a silver. And Sanger. 10 of 99. Tommaso Ciampa. One of the best NXT champions of all the times. Great character work. Fan. Fucking tastic character work. The obsession with the belt. With great storytelling. The feud with Gargano was great. Chap was a, is an NXT legend, fam. Macho Man choosing a slim Jim Monster Truck winner. Oh, yeah. How do we like LA Knight taking over the yeah for Macho Man Slim Jim's commercials? How do we like that? Are we, are we fine with that? Is that okay? Buffalo is really back in 96 right now. My man is living it up in 96. What was I doing in 96? Looking at it. Congrats, Joan. Shout out to Joan. Shout out to Joan. I'll feel you, fam. I would be too. John Quinn on the silver. Valkyrie on the red. The Bex. You're in Bosnia. For work. Michael said getting married. 63.99. Global icons. Gable Stevenson. We'll see what happens when he gets back. Ah, military man. Respect it. The Rock, 88 and 99 on the Dwayne. I was three years away from the military in 96. Military was my future in 96. They are wrestling upstairs, apparently. Uh, can't determine the winner just yet. Sounds like a riveting match, though. Absolutely riveting. It's all ancient history now. Fair. Wow, chicka, wow, wow. Nah, not that. They're, these are children. These are children wrestling around upstairs. Not that type of house. Let's see. Keanu James. Hey, that'll uncreep you. There's your Hogan ring, your Hollywood Hogan ringside. Hey, we'll show you some love, Buffalo. We'll put that on, put that on a docket for you. Eric on the red ringside. We'll take that one. Look at that, snapped him right back. Braun Strowman, red snapshot. Bam, bam. Liv Morgan, thirty-four ninety-nine. And Braun Breaker, 81 of 99. On the Young Beast. Running the ropes like a madman. 
How do you discover the fact that you can hit the ropes that fast? That's what I want to see. I think I mentioned this before. I'm not sure if I got this concept out. I would love to see a Ilya Dragunov and Will Ospreay match. I think that would be great. I think that would be a fantastic wrestling extravaganza. And I want to see that. All right, next box. This is why Endeavor needs to take over. Give me my dream matches. Give me my best of five series between Brian Danielson and Gunther. Give me my Dragonov versus Osprey match. Endeavor, do your damn job. Definitely didn't say I want their Osprey, sir. Ilya Dragonov and Will Osprey. Michael. Damn it, Michael. We've been on the same page all night, bro. And then you do this. Then you do this. You just ruin it all. Just ruin it all. <clears throat> There's Yokozuna, the Samoan Japanese man. Ringside of trips on the boss man. There's John Cena on the red. Ringside gold gang of the Natty 710 Natalia on the gold ringside King Booker 79 and 99. Oh, yeah, and Dexter Loomis 48 of 99 on the Delirious Loomis. Looney Loomis. We got a lot of golds in this uh in this select case. A lot of golds in the elite, a lot of golds in the select. We gonna need impeccable to fire back with the same love. Let's get another gold auto, though. Let's stop playing around. Let's get some more autos out of here. Some more autos out of select. Giant versus Jeff Jarrett. Giant wins the U.S. champion. Or Giant was the U.S. champion. I got to go back and watch some more Jeff Jarrett matches. I don't think I appreciated him. Perhaps the way I should have. I hear tell he's actually pretty good. Maybe I need to go back and rewatch. I didn't like him. I didn't like him at the time. We got a redemption. John Cena on the silver. Eddie G. Uh, Taker. Hank Walker. Roman Reigns on the Sensations. There's our silver ringside. Ronda Rousey. That's fire. Nice case hit on the Rousey. All right. Who's our redemption? Signatures, Red Wave Prism, Card 22. Gable Stevenson. Gable Stevenson is our redemption auto. On the Red Wave Prism. Ronda Rousey is our silver ring side case hit. Take that. Do -do 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 -do. 
Not a U.S. title match. Does this mean Jared wins? Why are they having this match on Halloween Havoc? Jared has to win this match, though. Jared hits him with a guitar. Is this uh 96? Is Jared Horseman at this time? Abocado. Got a gold coming up. Becky Lynch, Global Icons. Raquel Rodriguez, 83 of 99. Okay. Yeah. This must be a... Uh, there's Rhea Ripley on the blue. 11 of 99. This must be um Four Horsemen, Jeff Jarrett. Ringside of Chad Gable. Red ring side of the honky talk man. Gold snapshot JC Jane. 410. Okay. Yeah, that makes more sense. That makes more sense. And Piper Nevin. So NWO say he done to put the title on the line. Blah 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 blah. He'll probably lose to Jared, who's Four Horsemen now, or it'll be some kind of funky run-in or something. You know, they really just, they really bumbled that whole NWO thing. They really, really messed that up. It didn't have to grow into these epic proportions of 38 members per faction within faction. Like half your roster shouldn't be NWO. They never really learned that lesson either. Because even when they ran um, the little Faction Wars thing. Which I've always kind of liked the Faction Wars type of situation. But they really just messed that up. The concept was good. I don't think they did it. <laughs> Jordan. <laughs> I was like, hold on, 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 hold on. Jared better not ever. There was a time, though, I think in WCW, where, uh, where Ric Flair gave him the snap and made him a horseman. Honorary or something like that. I personally thought it was goofy as hell, too. But, yeah, I got to remember that there was that stretch where, like, Arn was out, where Rick was just throwing... When Rick was just throwing uh, anybody in the horse, like Paul Roma was a horseman member at one time. Luger had it at one time. Like he was just throwing anybody to kind of fill the void until you know Benoit was able to really fully ingratiate it. But for the most part, he was terrible. Twenty eight and ninety nine. For the most part, like them, they were just throwing anybody in a horseman spot. It was absolutely disgusting to see Ludwig Kaiser on the silver. And Booker. McMichael beat the crap out of him. Yeah, it was. Yeah, man. Steve Mongo when Michael was a, was a horseman. Like, come on, fam. What are we doing right now? Flair was handing out horseman spots like Oprah. You get a horseman. You get a horseman. You get a horseman. I was like, dude. Mongo McMichael. You love Mongo as a horseman? I couldn't stand it. <clears throat> I understood the concept of him, of him being muscle. But, eh.
Pillman. That's what I'm saying. Some of it just didn't make sense. Like, individually, right? Pillman as an individual talent, yeah, like them. As a horseman, why? What? Like, why? Everyone leave the river. <laughs> Terry Taylor. That's what I'm saying. But but, but that should have been you got that you have to set a standard is my point, right? If you're not gonna be Arn or Oli level, you can't you don't get to just wear this title, bro. Yo Sky on the global icons. I like Pillman. Pillman, I didn't mind so much as a horseman, but uh, it's just something that comes with that title that I think it just carries a little more weight, and they needed to be a little more selective about who they added. Roberto Lashley on the sensations. Gold gang, 7 of 10. Second gold, Bobby Lashley, we pulled out of select. So the Lashley spot doing some dining tonight. Hey, we got our artistic card. Good, good, good. Alexa Bliss. Dakota Kai. Was uh was Dusty over there? Was Dustin over there in time to be a horseman? I wouldn't have minded that. Mr. Allen Jones on the artistic selections. That's fire. Mr. Allen Jones. A J Styles. I like it. It was Dustin on the roster? He's been abused by the giant. Dustin is somebody I would I would buy in as being a horseman. That's enough that's a discussion we haven't had in a while. Now that we've got some different uh some new talent to choose from, some new talent to look at, some development of some talent. If we're recreating some of these famed factions, who are the members we go with? If we create a new four horsemen. In the WWE, who are the members? Cody Rhodes, 39 of 99. Braun Strowman, 6 of 99. Bruce Beefcake. Oh, okay. All right. Edge on the ring side. Ridge Holland. Undertaker and Jimmy Uso, five of ninety nine. Creepy gold dust, not the fun gold dust. sure you mint up before we do this seed, sir. Nothing to just blow the warmest of air into my face. I will punch you. So you make sure before we go out here and cut this promo, you throw a stick of gum in that bad boy. So we'll fight on camera, live. I don't care. Uh, Ron Simmons in the flare roll, Bradshaw and Anderson roll, Brock Lesnar is a muscle, and I'm not sure to put with those three, but those would be a bad version. Wait, wait, no, I'm talking about currently wrestling. If you got Ron Simmons, old ass. Boo me. 
Panini definitely did wear Daisy Dukes back in the day. These are facts. Bishop says Randy and the Claire roll. Oh, don't get me started, Vic. You already know where I'm going with that. You already know where I'm going. All right, so Randy and the Flare roll. What else we got? Silver John Cena. Speaking of Rando Keith Orton, there he is. Abdallah. China. Yeah, currents. We're going with the currents. I'm the boogeyman, and I'm coming to get you. Ronda Rousey, Global Icons, with the eye makeup. And Alan Jones, 58 of 9, Niner. If you say Orton, you know who I'm, you know who I'm finna put on that team. Orton, LA Knight, KO, and who? <sighs> Orton, LA Knight, Kevin Owens, and who? Creed's in that. Thank you, Vic. See, Vic, me and Vic on the same page, fam. Me and Victor are on the same page. You know I've been talking about Julius being Randy's apprentice for the longest. Me and Vic are on the same page. Randy Orton in the flare roll. The Creeds as the Andersons. Orton Breaker, LA Knight, and Owens. I'm not terribly that's your new four. I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that. I like Vic's I like Vic's uh team because I do think the creeds kind of fit that dynamic. And like I said, I think Julius is a star. And I think Randy should take him under his wing as like his protege and turn him into that star. Drew Gulak. AJ and LA Knight. I'm not mad at Gunther being a horseman, to be honest with you. Nine of 99. Singer. I'm not mad at Gunther being that right hand. Top dollar. Yeah, I figured I figured uh Jared was gonna win that. Top dollar, gold gang, one of ten. And Santos Escobar, $64.99. Brian Breaker has to be. I'm not mad at Brian being there either. I'm a big Julius Creed guy. I think he should be Randy's, like, protege. So if you want to take Brutus Creed out and replace him with someone else, I'm cool with that. Uh, Brian Breaker, I think, makes sense. Depending on the rendition we're going with. Um, Gunther as like muscle makes sense. I don't know if we're doing. My only issue with that is we, we talking about a step back. But Gunther as like him and Randy. Randy being like the brainchild. Gunther being a bit of an executioner. So Arn after he stopped being a tag team wrestler. Die Jack, stop, 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 stop. If we go Gunther as the right hand, and we'll say I like actually like that. I like Orton Gunther and the Creeds. <laughs> hey, that's how that's how it works. So we get in here and we start talking wrestling, man. Look, if you don't get cards, you're gonna get some entertainment. You think Brown would be better as like the Sting or Luger roll top face that fused with them? I like that idea, Jeremiah. I'm not even gonna lie to you, fam. I like that idea. I like that idea a lot. Yeah, I got. I want to go uh, Orton, Gunther, and the Creeds, and yeah, Brown as as a main um, rival. I'm okay with that. 
Even uh, even LA Knight is like a main rival too. I can see Knight in the faction. I don't know if I if I wanted to be the Horseman. Nice, nice, Todd. That's fire. All right, so we got the Horseman out of the way. Who's who would be our new? We had this discussion before, but twenty five and ninety nine. If we were to rerun the NWO angle, who would be our our three uh, leading men to start out with? Andre the Giant on the ringside, red ringside of JC Jane, Cam Grimes. Ah, uh, yeah, but we not nah, we not putting him in the Horseman group. Nah, not D Wayne. Let's uh all right, let's get our new NWO. Let's get our new Hall Nash and Hogan. And Michael, if you say die jack, so help me God. I will come through this phone, fam. Cool, cool. Kali. CM Punk, definitely for the NWO, Cody as the third man. All right, so we had this we had this before, right? If we were to have AEW do a NWO-type takeover in WWE, right? I would have had MJF probably Wardlow because he needs some size. Uh, next to him, he needs muscle next to him. The inside man, speculation to be Cena, but not be Cena. And I would have it probably be like Orton or somebody like that. Josh Briggs, one of 99. Gigi Dolan on the silver. Yeah, Cody would be obvious. CM Punk would be obvious, but it'd be neither one of them. Tatum Paxley. Hulk Hogan. 40 of 99. I would think... So, if we do Cody or Punk because they're kind of front door, and you would think that they'd be the ones that kind of ushered in this path for AEW to make this to make this run, I would, I would let you guys decide in this scenario who then becomes Sting. Because I think that would be perfect... For Cena, right? So MJF, being the historian that he is, comes through with the same angle, kind of runs the same thing, and has everything points to the modern day Hogan. And the modern day Hogan would be Cena. So he puts all the evidence to have it point to the modern day Hogan as the third member. We all bite, we buy into the fact that oh, it's Cena. This is going to be his last hurrah. He gets his face, he gets his uh he gets his hill run, and this is how he's gonna do it. He's gonna be the Hogan of this generation and be the one that turns and sets up the NWO, the new NWO. So everybody buys into that, starts accusing him, and then he in turn ends up going into crow sting mode because nobody believes him. When he's been extremely dedicated to this company for a long time. And I think that third member is Orton. Because, you know, the RKO hits at any point in time. So you can definitely tease either way. And then there you go. There's your new NWO. Just my idea. Obviously, I'm open to all kinds of suggestions. We just talking. Alan Jones would be a good one. He can't lead a faction like... Well, let me take that back because he didn't... Well, it's Japan, though. It's different. It's different. I don't know if that counts the same. Austin Theory on the silver. Riddle. The... Uh, Lita. 13 to 99. Gold Gang. Liv Morgan. Two of ten. So I had to scratch my nose. Ooh. 
Global Icons and Angle. And Emma. And her dancing gimmick. Beep, 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 beep. You know I run out of top loaders? Probably. Get some more toppy loaders. Imagine gold dust lurking in the rafters, stuttering. <laughs> Buffalo Lala right now. Finn Baller. Scott Hall, Mr. Razor Ramon. Ivar. Nine of ninety nine. Whatever they're finna set up with him and uh Oba Femi down at NXT is going to be fucking fun. William Rico forty four of ninety nine. That's going to be a good time. Nice challenge for Oba. Another style that he'll have to deal with. Gigi Dolan on the ringside. Rhea Ripley. But I think that'll be a fun match. I'm actually looking forward to see how that pans out. Cora Jade. Because Ivar is massive. She's got the, uh, the agility portion down. We saw what he did with Dijak and Briggs, who both have... Very nice agility for their size too, but they're lean. They're leaner guys. Ivar has a little more. He's a little huskier, I guess you can say. He's wider, so there's as a different dynamic in terms of body type, and which Oba has to deal with. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm looking forward to that match. I'm looking forward to that. Either one match or series of matches. This kid is this kid is a star though. He's on his way. He's on his way. I think in about they'll probably have him down there for maybe a year or so. I don't even know if they give him the main title before they bring him out. I'm sure they will. I don't know if it's necessary. But I'm sure they will. But Obafemi is going to be a stud going forward. Yeah. As he should, because he's the he's one of the only guys on that on that NXT roster, one of the only people on the NXT roster, I think that they could bring up right now and throw him in the storyline and he'll be fine. In terms of put him in some sort of picture and be and he'll be okay. That's just the stuff he's able to do, the feats of strength, the, the how imposing he is, the character work, even it just his front door. Kid's going to be good. He's going to be really, really good. That triple threat match is insane. It is insane. And for him to be this good this soon, this Ivar match will be a good test. We've seen him against smaller guys. We've seen him against... We've seen him in a triple threat. I'd like to see how a tag match translates, but I also don't see him being involved in too many of those to begin with. And I don't even know if he necessarily needs a mouthpiece right now. I think for what his character is, uh, what he does in his promos is more than good enough to carry him. 25 and 99 on the Thea Hell. Uh, to get him over. Hogan on the silver. Emma. But they can give him a real run right now. Razor Ramon. Trish Stratus on the ringside. Rhea Ripley. Do I still have... No, I don't. But 
Yeah, there's star power there. There's potential there. I mean, obviously, Braun moved up. He was ready. Tiffany moved up. She was ready. I don't think anybody else that they have down there right now, you can just move up to the main roster and throw on that program, and they survive. Um, like, Trick is really good. Melo is really good. I think they missed a the ball on Melo, but he's still really good. Dragon off, like all these guys are good. Roxanne Perez, all of these wrestlers are good, but surviving on the main roster without something that helps them stand out completely, I don't think it's going to be possible for a lot of them. Obafemi doesn't have that issue. There's Hogan, nice little Hollywood Hogan on the insert. We got a goal coming up. Tribal Chief Roman Reigns, 2 of 99, well, former Tribal Chief. The new one is uh, Bangaroos, Lita, Gold Gang, 10 of 10 on the Gold Lita. Charlotte Flair on the Sensations. My phone doesn't seem to want to keep a charge. Uh, numbers are going the wrong way. Elias, 44 of 99. We're going to have to jury rig some stuff. Make sure I don't lose y'all before we get to the main. I think the last thing anybody would want is for this stream to die as we get to Impeccable. Right? There might be some furious individuals if that were to happen. So let me figure out well, my phone wants to act up and not charge properly. 21 likes. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you all. 42 in the chat. I think we had up to 51 at one point. Much love. Uh, all right. Yo. All right. I'm going to figure this out because we can't have this happen. Do not have this happen. I need you to not mess this up. Six beats Jericho thanks to NWO. Oh, bro. So this is basically NWO versus this is peak NWO versus WCW. Nick Patrick. Yikes. Forgot about that guy. 15 plus equals extra box. I might do math over here. I'd love to. I absolutely would love to. Okay. Um, we're losing power at a rapid rate. All right, folks, let me just close out a bunch of stuff on my phone to make sure I don't lose y'all. All right, let's see if that helps. Silver Dexter Loomis. Leah. Ringside of B-Fab. Ringside Red of Dolph Ziggler. It's a nice hit. Axiom, 27-99, one half of your NXT Tag Team Champions, and Dwayne on the red. Dwayne!
Hey yo. This is not good. This is not good. This is not good. We had uh, two autos, Tyler. We had the gold auto. We had a redemption. Yeah, I don't want you to miss your Eddie Silver bar either. If that's even a thing. Trying to get my power to go back up the other way. Well, you asked for an auto. I think there should be another one coming up. It is. Kane, one of five. Gold Gang Auto. There you go. Ask and you shall receive. You summon the auto. There we go. Now we're moving back the other direction. All right, we're good. We're good, guys. We're good. We're good. A little nervous. A little nervous, but we're good. We're going, our uh, power percentages are going the other way. Alundra Blaze, 91 and 99. Another gold before we get out of here. Trish Stratus. It's not a bad one to pull. Cool, the one on one of this out of hobby. 5 of 10, gold gang. Trish Stratus on the ringside. And Ronda Rousey, 73 and 99. That finishes out our select selection. And now it's time for the main event. What you all came here for. Here's your Trish. Here's your Kane Auto. Yes, sir. To five. And I'm under Blaze. And now we're going to go into our Impeccable. Bam! What great timing. The UFC main event is starting to. Well, don't nobody say nothing. I don't want to know. I'm going to watch it on certain these cards. <clears throat> so don't nobody tell me nothing. No spoilers. No spoilers. I don't care if it is a first round knockout. Now this thing to go up one percentage point and just stay there. There we go. Stop playing. All right. Get our impacted wall out the way. Three boxes of absolute legendary stuff. Hey, Andrew, we will ban you, sir. I will gladly ban you over tomfoolery like that. All right. Let me see. I need my 130s, right? I got some of those here. All right, cool. We're good. We're going. <laughs> nah, you good, fam. I'm just messing with you, bro. I'm going to watch it regardless, whether I know what happened or not. I'm still going to watch it. But I definitely want to see it without knowing. So that don't take that as like, you can just tell me. Why is this stupid? There it is. One on one Hollywood incoming. For you, Buffalo, I'd be ecstatic if we were able to do that. Because it's you. Because you're my guy. You're my guy. This is a 
skinny pack. Alright folks, grand finale coming up, we got the bottom, we got the top, let's go. You streak down Broad Street and Philly are broadcasting? I actually believe you, crazy enough. Tory Wilson out the gate. 93 of 99 on the Tory Wilson. Oddly enough, I believe every word that you're saying right now. I don't doubt one bit that that's what you do, Buffalo. Not one bit. Where's the rest of the... Let's get more. I'll just give you more. Alright. Make it happen to watch the live cat. Oh. I just said I wanted to see it. I just said I believed you. I'll take your word for it. I don't need to. I don't need to watch that. I don't need to see you in action, sir. I believe you, Buffalo. You might be furious after this card. Dakota Kai, forty-nine of forty-nine on Dakota. Next up, just remember, I love you, bro. Just remember, I still love you, bro. Hulk Hogan, 12 or 35. That's fire. Oh, okay. All right, we're good then. Never mind. Still love you, but never mind. I don't feel bad now. All right. We'll go on the other side. We have a stainless steel auto. You have a 25, so it's good. OJD. Well, Orthol J. Nah, that's not what it is. 71 of 99. Core Jade. Cora Jade. Not a bad hit there. We'll take that. Cora Jade on the stainless steel auto. Showed out a little bit of love skis. There you go. All right, let's see our next auto is. Did we get two stainless steel autos? I think we did. Austin Theory, 49 of 49, A-Town down patch auto. One half of your SmackDown Tag Team Champions. What's up, Fess? You've been here this whole time, and you, you chime in on the OJ joke? That's when you want to like, announce yourself? Yeah, RIP to the juice. All right. Late to the party. It's been a party. Is that J.O.J.? J.C. Jane, 50 of 99. Another stainless steel auto. So far, so good. So far, so good on this first impeccable box. All right. What other autos are we coming up with here? Got a redemption coming up as well. But Feist, 
Kiana James on the extravagance. This is 57 to 75. On the Kiki J. Alright, and our redemption is Indelible Ink Silver, card number 30, Stevie Richards. That's random. Stevie Richards of YouTube fame. I think he's doing like a Kobe Bryant detail or Peyton Manning type of, you know. Uh, insider information series over on YouTube. Here's why this person got hurt during this move. It's not bad. Nice little pivot. Alright. Stainless steel. Becky Lynch. The backs. I think it's the second one of these we pulled of uh, Miss Becky. This one is 16 to 49 on a Becky Lynch stainless steel. All right, so one box down. Box numero dos. I got to remember what elite to just do my randoms in the beginning of the break. I'm going to start it off with that. I think I did that with Rebel, too. Save some time. We got our, it's not our bar, it doesn't come out of our box either, there we go, so not our bar, so our bar will be in our third box, alright, Back side, which feels like a stainless steel. So we got another stainless steel auto. All right, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got here for our first one. Carrying cross, thirty of forty-nine. On Mr. Cross. Next up. Wow. Mentioned him earlier. Red Rooster. 53 of 99. For our guy Todd. Shout out to the Red Rooster. Said everybody go easy on him. Look at what we pull. All right, next up. We have a redemption after this. Undertaker. Four of 35. On Mean Mark Calloway. Taker usually hits at least one time. An impeccable for us. Not sure why, but a consistent hit nonetheless. Alright, we're going to our redemption before we flip. And this redemption is Elegance Mem Auto. Card 41, Kevin Owens. That's a nice hit. That is a nice hit. We will definitely take the KO. We will take the KO card. Good times. All right, cool. All right, let's flip. I believe we have a stainless steel to start us off with. Oh. Ava. Very nice. 15 to 25. On the NXT GM. Her daddy was a Stara. 
for WrestleMania weekend. It's a good hit. Very nice hit. Number to 25. Sheiky, 24 25 on an Iron Sheik Auto. Indelible ink. Nice Sheiky hit. Yeah. Take that one. RIP to the legend. And illustrious ink of Jimmy Hart, 13 to 75. The mouth of the south. Jimmy Hart, baby. <clears throat> that fight must be good because y'all are quiet as hell. All right. Next up. The last card of this box. Watercolor. Sanga. Three of seventy five. On the Sanga Auto. Alright. So two down. One to go. And the last one will have our bar. Foist. See our second stainless steel is. Fair enough, Drew. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'm finna be done with this in a minute anyway. We'll do the recap and then I'm getting the hell up out of here. See how much of that fight I can catch. Buffalo. Buffalo. Who loves you? Who loves you, fam? 10 out of 10. Gold Gang. Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Buffalo. Who loves you, fam? Is he here? I know he didn't dip out. I know damn well my guy didn't just dip out. There you go. 10 out of 10. Stainless steel. That's fire. That is fire. Shout out to you, sir. Congratulations. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. That's fire. Look at that. Look at that. You see? When you have good karma, you show love. We shall love back. Buffalo's my guy, man. I'm glad we get here for you. I am glad we get here for you. No, thank you, sir. Your continuous support. I appreciate you. All right. Here's our bar. Let's see what we can get before we get to our bar. That bottom coverage, and we got that top coverage. So now, all right, what we got? What we got? What we got? What we got? First up, Taker 75 of 99. So, 200 Taker hits and impeccable. Oh. Ran out of top load of these. One second. Damn, I almost stopped myself right now. Not quite a one-on-one, -on -one, but damn close. Hey, man. We still got the bar coming. We still got that bar back there. You never know. You never know. Might be a Hollywood night. Might be a Hollywood night. All right, let's see what we got. 24 likes. We appreciate you guys, man. 1,000%. Stone Cold Steve Austin, 12 of 99. Another legend. Mr. Steven. No lie, though, after this uh, 
to this final boss run, I might have to redo my rankings. I had Austin as a GOAT overall. Not my personal GOAT, but just as like objective GOAT. But but this final boss run that we've seen with the rock, <laughs> I have to do some adjusting. Nice rookie hit. Rock's daughter again. 20 to 25 on an Ava. We ride spinners. We ride spinners. Ah! God damn it. ESPN alerts. <laughs> Alright, is this. Last one. Yeah. Well, I'm still going to watch the fight. It was backwards, huh? Yep, it is backwards. All right. We will... Uh, let's do it this way. Take this. There. All right, cool. Canvas. Creations. Scripts. Interesting. 16 to, 50, 16 to 75. Didn't see that coming. Nice scripts hit though. For the script spot. Alright, now we'll flip them. Redemption. Jumbo Mem Auto. Card 15, Sami Zayn, the new Intercontinental Champion, Samuel Zayn, alright, next up, Bailey, 425 on the Bailey Patch Auto. Take that. Also, new champ over WrestleMania weekend. Five of twenty five. Tito Santana. El Matador. Because Vince likes to lean into his stereotypes. Heavy. Tito's a good wrestler, though. Very good in ring performer. Mr. Tito Santana. Good hit there to 25. Last card before we get to our bar. There's a hand that belongs to Brian Nobbs, 50 of 60, Nasty Boys, Immortal Inc., Mr. Brian Nobbs, random as hell, but he's in the set. All right, that was our last card prior to the bar. And now let's see who our bar is going to be. All right. I'm going to peek. That silver. Gold bar. Uno de uno. Randy Orton. That's fire. 
That is fire. This is not. This little, this here is not fire. But this is a fire hit. This is, this is not good. We don't like this part. Not good. But one of one, gold bar, Randy Keith Orton. Oh, that's fire. That's fire. That's how you finish. That's how you finish. That is how you finish. Yes, sir. All right. That's good stuff. We will run through our recap real quiz, Nick. Actually, I cannot. Let me see. I still owe you guys a couple randoms, I believe. Give me one second. See if I, I need to, I need, I need, blah, blah, blah. I know I need to do at least one. Maybe not so much with these, but I got to do at least one random. All right. We'll do our left, right. Where's my laptop? There it is. There it is. Appreciate you, Buffalo. Appreciate you. Glad they would hit that Hogan for you. That gold bar for you, but still glad they would get that Hogan for you. All right, let me set something up real quick. We ride spinners. We ride spinners. Let me see. Who was our lineage? The Mysterios, Ray and Dom. There's that one. So we got Ray. Dom. This was right, yeah, dice roller. All right, I'm gonna plug this. This here. All right, here we go. Gonna roll our dice. Turn that off real quick. Gotta be greater than five. Greater than five, eight. All right, cool. So for our left, right, this is for our family lineage cards. One second, go. All right, cool. Eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So those cards will go to the wrestler on the right side of the card. And for our teal, Rey Mysterio and Dom Mysterio, we got to roll eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So that will go to the Rey Mysterio spot. So our right side, our family lineage cards and Rey Mysterio on our <clears throat> uh, teal family lineage of Rain Dom. So that's that. Now we can run our recap. <clears throat> was it was a decent break. It was a pretty, pretty decent break. I'm not even gonna lie to y'all. Break was, you know, break was all right. Break was all right. Can't complain too much. All right. For our elite to 149, Dragon Lee, Becky Lynch, Bailey, Mankind, Electra Lopez, Dwayne, Elias, Alba Fire, Kurt Angle, Raquel Rodriguez, Dragonoff, Ivy Nile, Chelsea Green, Bailey, Stacy Keebler, Bianca Blair, Jimmy Uso, and Otis. Those are the 149. All of our hits to 99 combined in our breaks. Big old stat. 
on the elite side of things, Sonya Deville, Jay Uso, Diesel, Mankind, Diesel again, Roman Reigns, Red Rooster, Cody Rhodes, Jay Uso, Kofi Kingston, Ricochet, Edge, Hulk Hogan on the elite deck, Bailey on the star status, Dwayne on the elite deck, and the spellbound of Stone Cold, <clears throat> Alundra Blaze, Ronda Rousey, Axiom, Roman Reigns, Elias, Thea Hell, Ivar, William Regal. Oh, but there's more. Lita, Josh Briggs, Hulk Hogan, Massey, Dabo Cato, Santos Escobar, AJ Styles, Cody Rhodes, Braun Strowman, Jimmy Uso, Aaliyah, Rhea Ripley, Raquel Rodriguez, Booker T, Dexter Loomis, Liv Morgan, Braun Breaker, Becky Lynch, Dwayne, Julius Creed, Sanga, Asuka, Undertaker, Gigi, Randy Orton had a great break, Drew McIntyre, Asuka, and the King of Mystery, Mr. Ray Mysterio. 280 out of our elite, Finn Baller, Dijak, Ted DiBiase, Iron Sheik, Butch, Omas, Dakota Kai, Riddick Moss, Nikita Lyons. To 53, British Bulldog, Godfather, Roxanne Perez, Gunther, Omas. To 49, Road Dog, Lead on the Star Status, Kiana James, John Cena on the Lead Deck, Scarlett, Quincy Elliott, Brock Lesnar on the K, Full Throttle, Austin Theory, Rhea Ripley, and Trish Stratus, who started off our break. Our in 25, Jimmy Uso, Roxanne P, Stone Cold on the Spellbound, Ken Shamrock, Candice LeRae, Finn Baller, and this Rey Mysterio and Don Mysterio Family Lineage card, which will go to the Rey Mysterio spot. To 24 are die cuts out of Elite. Matt Riddle, Shinsuke Nakamura, Bret Hart, Eddie Guerrero, Santos Escobar, LA Knight, Hell, yeah. Butch, Roddy Piper, and Tyler Bates. Two Razzle Dazzles out of Elite. Sherry Martell and JD McDonough. <clears throat> Our red ring sides out of Select. Dolph Ziggler, JC Jane. Eric, Mustafa Ali, 123Kid, and the Honky Talk Man. Case hits out of select, artistic selection of AJ Styles. We got Hogan on the ring side and a silver ring side of Ronda Rousey. That was Hollywood Hogan, by the way. Let's see, what are we going to do next? Uh, select Redemption, Gable Stevenson, Red Wave Signature. Uh, we might as well just let that lead us into our autos. Here we go. We'll do autos, then we'll do Go Gang. Sonya Deville, Beth Phoenix, JC Jane, Redemption of Ray Mysterio, Carl Anderson, JD McDonough, Seth Rollins, Top Dollar. One, two, three, kid, Kiana James. This is Cora Jade, the 49. Becky Lynch, the 25. Noam Dar, the 25. Gigi Dolan, the 49. And Gunther. Fit Finley, the 49. And Dolph Ziggler. Those are our elite autos. Let's see. Gold Gang. Out of select. Trish Stratus on the ringside. Lita, these are all the 10. Liv Morgan, Top Dollar, Bobby Lashley, JC Jane on the snapshot, Natalia on the ringside, Dexter Loomis on the snapshot, Bobby Lashley and a snapshot of Kane. Our go gang out of Elite was pretty damn elite. Xavier Woods, that was a redemption, but that would be a gold signature. Nikita Lyons on the Pen Pals, Baron Corbin, Tatum Paxley. Bray Wyatt on the star status. And Rhea Ripley, gold to 10 on the auto. Very nice. 
Our gold autos out of select. These are number to five. That's Kane and Karen Cross on the ring side. We'll get into our impeccable now. Base impeccable hits. Ava to 25. Stone Cold. Undertaker. Undertaker to 35. Red Rooster. Karen Cross. Hogan to 35. Dakota Kai and Tori Wilson. A lot of spacers. Get them out of the way. Stainless Steel Base, Becky Lynch, and Hogan Gold to 10 for our guy Buffalo. Big hit there. Love that for our guy Buffalo. Our Stainless Steel Autos, Ava to 25, JC Jane, and Cora Jade. So the ladies of NXT coming on full force there. <coughs> non patch Autos, Brian Nobbs, Tito Santana to 25, Sami Zayn. This will be a mem auto that should go over here in this pile, but nonetheless, there's scripts. Senga, Jimmy Hart to 75, Iron Sheik to 25, another mem auto, Kevin Owens, uh, Stevie Richards, and Kiana James on the extravagance auto. All right. These two redemptions are for mem autos of Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Another mem auto of Bailey to 25 and a mem auto of Austin Theory to 49. Nice book in mem auto. Now, without question, the two stars of the show, you know, Mr. Uno de Uno, and they came out in full flesh tonight. Uno de Uno. Carmelo Hayes, one of one out of Elite. Fantastic. And to finish the break, last card of the break. Full bar, gold gang, uno de uno. Randy Orton on a gold bar out of impeccable. Fantastic. That's the break. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next time. Peace.